Hey, it's Jacob from Go Industrial. Thanks so much for purchasing our Greco Fiber Air Driven Airless Sprayer Kit. And very quickly, I'm gonna be running you through what components are made up of this kit, how to get it set up, how to dial in all of your settings and operate without any headaches. Of course, if you have any questions or need immediate assistance, please get in touch with the Go Industrial Service team. We're more than happy to help you out whenever we can. Let's get right into it. This is an air driven kit, which means that we're using air to drive the entire system, which includes the agitator, as well as the piston pump. We'll start off where the air is actually input into the system. We have a standard Nitto fitting that connects into our air regulator, and this is where you control all of the unit from. This air regulator is super simple to use, pops out when you need to make an adjustment, you turn clockwise to increase the airflow, inherently the pressure as well, feeding air to the agitator, and you click down to lock in that setting. After some use, you'll understand where the best pressure is to set to get the best spray result possible. And again, to relieve pressure in the system, turn all the way down, click it back in, and you're ready to pack up. Next, we have our three-way T, which is how the agitator gets its air surprise through this thin tube. And then we have our agitator, which sits in the top of the drum lid. It's got an easy pressure dial adjustment here, which you spin anti-clockwise to speed up the agitator, and clockwise to slow it down and trigger it off. We then have a ball valve here, which is in currently in a closed position. To open this ball valve to let some air through to the pump to actually fire up the motor, all you need to do is turn it in the direction of flow. And as soon as we start adjusting this air, it will trigger the piston pump to operate, to reach pressure, install, and then you'll be right to start spraying with your spray gun. It's really as simple as that. Again, if you're needing to release pressure, you're just turning that air all the way down, clicking it back into place, relieving pressure out of the gun itself, you're ready to pack up and go again the next time. So let's get some air through this compressor. We'll build up to pressure and show you what this looks like in use. So we have sufficient airflow coming in from our compressor now, and we're gonna introduce some air into the system. So again, all we do is pop this pressure dial up. We're gonna adjust it. The pump will only ever stroke in a 10 to one ratio. So 100 PSI of air in, you're gonna get 1000 PSI of pressure out. That's all you'll need to be doing the majority of spraying for the material that's been specified. So here, I'm just gonna adjust it to about 60 PSI of air pressure in, so it's operating about 600 PSI. And I'm going to show you with the ball valve closed how to turn this agitator on. So in the clockwise position, you'll start to hear the difference. You can now hear that the agitator is spinning the material without affecting our piston pump building for pressure. Now, if I want to introduce some pressure into the system, all I need to do, open the ball valve, you can hear that pump. It's literally just built to 600 PSI so quickly. It has quite a high flow rate, even though it's a lower pressure. And now our gun's already in the spray. Now our gun's reached pressure, our agitator's operating, we've got air in the system. I can lock in that setting right there, and we're all ready to dial in our spray fan. So with your handpiece, the first thing you wanna do is actually take the trigger lock off. So right now, it's a safety feature, so that way you don't accidentally spray yourself. Be very, very cautious of operating this airless spray gun. 1,000 PSI is still quite high pressure. If you put your hands anywhere near the spray tip itself, you can risk injection injury, which is extremely dangerous. And if it does happen, you pierce the skin, please go straight to the hospital. So in saying that, we're gonna remove the trigger lock, which is the spring system here. Now the trigger is on. We're gonna put some air into the system. and the pump is built for pressure. So in order to spray with this, you want to trigger on and trigger off whatever surface you're trying to cover. And again, the pump will always reach and store the pressure, which is really handy. I'm gonna put my trigger lock on again. And what I'll do here is we've also supplied an alternative tip and guard, which will give you a much finer finish. So all we need to do there just remove the guard by screwing it off and the tip will come out with it. Then with our tip and guard here, the tip will go in sideways, lock in, forward for spray, reverse to clean. So let's put this in now. We're gonna screw the guard onto the gun now, make sure it's hand tight. My tip's on, nice and tight as well. So now with this different tip and guard, it's a lot lower pressure. It'll give us a nice fine finish as opposed to the guard and tip that comes with your package standard. So what we'll do now is we'll release the gun trigger lock. Okay, so now you've got your fine finish low pressure tip in. You're gonna start spraying off the substrate. 
trigger on, trigger off at the end of the substrate and trigger on again. 50% overlap each time depending on what you're coating. And you can see it's a lot finer of a finish. So if that works a lot better than the orange guard in the rack five or the black tip, this will be the way to go. It also works to pump a lot less and is great for longevity. So they're really great tips to use and we've supplied one with this kit. These tips also have a lot less pulsation so you'll get a more even coat depending on what you're coating. It's as simple as that. All we need to do now is relieve pressure in the system, turn this all the way down, lock it, bleed the rest of the pressure in the line, just like so. Put your trigger lock back on like so, so we're not spraying ourselves. And now we'll show you how to remove the lid from the 20 liter drum to either clean out, refill, or pack up and get ready to go again for the next job. So now we'll show you how to remove the lid to refill the drum or to clean it out and get it ready for the next job. You have three grub screws on the top of the lid that actually hold this in place. All you wanna do is make sure that the pressure and air is relieved in the system first before you undo these. It's as simple, just gotta loosen these out, spin them anti-clockwise. The pump itself has a pretty easy handle. There's a little bit of weight to it, so make sure that you're lifting correctly with your back. And you, as you can see, we can remove the pump like so. We've got the bottom of the agitator that's in the drum, as well as the suction tube that's actually on the pump itself. So that's all you need to do to have refill, to clean it out and go again. Get this lid into position. You'll know because the lip of the lid will be going over the 20 liter drum and just tighten the grub screws right back up again. Ensure that this is nice and tight because we don't want any air leaking from the system when it's under pressure because that will cause inconsistencies in your spray fan. It's as simple as that. We've got it all set up, we've cleaned down, you're ready to go again for the next job. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please get in touch with the Go Industrial Service team. You can call us on 07 3204 2240 or send us an email to sales at goind.com.au. I'm Jacob, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you have a great day.